Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're going to do the Cherry Pie Hot Pad. And this is a practical but really kind of a neat idea. I'm thinking Thanksgiving, I'm thinking fall, I'm thinking special occasion. It is a hot pad so you can put down any hot things on top of this on a table surface. So let's take a look at the pattern next. So here's a pattern and it's just one page and at the bottom of the page here we have the strips that go on top of the pie just like you see here and so it's organized in a way so I've seen Daniel actually make pie like this so it's actually kind of neat itself so it's all crochet and there's going to be two pieces of the pie so you're going to have the, the filling that is in red right here and then off camera here I have the bottom already done because the filling and the bottom is completely the same pattern. So it's a nice thing so this will be the bottom of the crust. So there's actually crust underneath so if anybody was to flip this they would not see the cherry coming through. So you have to do two layers of these round circles. So one's gonna be in the pie crust uh, flavor. It's gonna be Lily Sugar and Cream using Jute. This color is Jute and then we're gonna do the pie filling using um, Country Red I believe. So the Country Red is just laying on top and so then what we're gonna do then is that we're going to put things together and then we're gonna lay down our strips and then we're gonna do the outside edging. So what I wanna show you now is that I wanna show you this, the, the crust itself that lays on top and there are 12 pieces of the crust and they are just really quite simple just like this. And so you're gonna make a set number of those in three different sizes. There'll be 12 all together and then you're gonna lay them down in a woven format on the top of the pie and then that's good to go. So let me get you started. You're gonna need a four millimeter size G crochet hook today. You're gonna need your Lily Sugar and Cream. Do not use acrylic yarn my friends. Make sure it's cotton because anything hot that you put down on this will melt if it's acrylic but cotton you're completely fine. So make sure you grab your Lily Sugar and Cream or Bernat Handicrafter yarn. So let's get started on the beginning. So to get started today you're going to need to do two pieces like this. So this is gonna be the jute color. This is the crust underneath of the hot pad and then you're going to do the filling in the exact same design. So you're gonna have two round shapes that look like this. Now you'll notice that the pie has an edging that's applied afterward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make one of these. I'm gonna use the pie crust of uh, the pie flavoring as my next one that I'm about to show you but you need to make two of them. One for the back and then one for the forward. So let me uh, get you started on showing you how to do this piece of the pie. So let's get started today. We're going to create a slip knot to begin and just like so and just insert your hook in. Remember it's a four millimeter size G crochet hook today. So you're going to total a chain of four. So do a cha chain of four. So one, two, three, and four. So what this is counting of just for your information is that three of these chains are counting as a double crochet and the fourth chain is counting as the center of your pie. So now what I want you to do is I want you to double crochet four, five more times into the beginning chain. So just wrapping the hook and going into the beginning of the chain is just double crochet. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna count that first chain as one of them. So I need a total of six. So, so one, two, okay, and then three, and four five and six and once you have your six done so you have your chain that you started with so with five more so one two three four five so that gives you a total of six. I want you to just, just to pull it around and join it to the top of the beginning chain three that you started with with the slip stitch and that is the center of your pie like so. So let's move along to the first round. So round number two very simple just gonna chain up three so it counts as a double crochet. So one, two and three and into the same one that you did the join with I want you to double crochet one more time. So each one of these six spots are going to have two double crochets into them. So you just move to the next double crochet and then just put in two double crochets there. So one, and two and then you just move to the next one and then put two into that one and you do that all the way around. So you will have it going all the way around. So there should be th six groups of two by the time you get all the way around. I might as well take you all the way around now. I'm almost there. So one and two and carrying on Okay, and then I got one more to go. 
you're gonna notice it's nice and tight in the very beginning. It's gonna look like it's gonna buckle but it will settle down in the long term. So you should have six groups of two. So one, two, three, four, five, and six and then just pull it around and just join it to the beginning chain three that you had. So it's gonna look like it's puckering at this point. Don't worry about it. Just keep on going because it will settle down in the future. So round number three we're going to chain up three. One, two, and three and then just double crochet into the same one that you did the join with. And now each one of these that went all the way around I want you to put in two double crochets into each. So in the next stitch two double crochets and then move to the next stitch put another two in and do that all the way around. So this is round number three. So I'll meet you at the end of this round. So when you get all the way around there should be 12 groups of two as you count all the way around and as soon as you get all the way around just join it to the top of the beginning chain number three that you'd started with and that was round number three. So let's move along to round number four. Again really quite simple. So we're gonna chain up three counts as a double crochet and right where you've done the same um, slip stitch you're gonna do another double crochet. So there will be two that is in the first one. So to move around on this one the next one is gonna be one double crochet by itself and then the next one is gonna be two double crochet. So that's the repeat pattern going all the way around for this. Okay, so the next one's one by itself and then the next one has two into the same. So please do that all the way around for round number four. So as I come up all the way back around the last stitch if you're keeping an uh, accurate count it should just be one single crochet by itself and that's not doing anything special. It's just keeping with the pattern and then you're just going to join it. So let's then move along to round number five. So round number five again really quite simple chain up three and it's one double crochet into the same one. And now this time for the repeat pattern for this one is that there's the next two are gonna be by themselves. So just one and two. So they're just by themselves sitting by themselves and then the next one has two into the same one. So one and two. Okay so let's just recap on that. So the next two are by themselves. So one and two and then the next one has two into the same one. So please please do that all the way around for round number six. So as you come all the way back around you're gonna have two single crochets that are by themselves before then joining it and you're just following along with the, the stitch count anyway. So there's nothing special. So let's move along to our next round and the next round is identical to what we've just done. We're gonna do it one more time. We're gonna chain up two and then one double crochet into the same one and then the next two are gonna be by themselves as we just did in the last round. So it's a, it's a duplicate of the same round. So we're going to just put in one double crochet in each of the next two. And then the next one is gonna be two double crochets into the same one. So one and two. Okay so the repeat pattern is there's gonna be two one into the next two. So one and two and then the next one has two double crochets into the same one. Please do that same pattern going all the way around. So I'm coming all the way back around and just following the pattern as is and the last two are one double crochet each and then you're just going to join it to the top of the beginning chain three. So we've got one more revolution to do and this is round number seven. Round number seven we're going to chain up three counts as a double crochet and then we're going to go into the same one. Okay so there's two into that one and now the next three are by themselves. So just moving along and the next three double crochets are by themselves. So one, two and three. And then the next one, here's the repeat pattern, is going to be two double crochets into the same one. So one and two and then the next three are by themselves. So please do that same idea going all the way around for round number seven. So as I come up all the way around I'm just finishing up and keeping the same counts. And so this is the end of doing the pie filling for me. But you, of course the, this is only one side of the project so I'm just going to join it and pull through with a slip knot or a slip stitch and then I'm done. So now if this is the first one you're doing the crust is the same. Okay so this is your filling and so I've already done my crust because it's exactly the same. So if you're following along you need to make two of these completely and then what we do is that we put them together and it says with the wrong sides uh, place the wrong sides in the base together. So this is the wrong side here. Okay and this is the good side here. 
Okay, and then you put them together and then what we're going to do is then put them together. So then if you ever turn this over you'll see the pie crust in the back. But we're not quite done yet. We have to then make the strips and so make sure that you do two pieces here and then just weave off your ends and then we're gonna start doing the strips next. So now what we have to do is that we have to do the strips and these are the strips that appear over top of the weaving or the woven look of the dough going on board. So what you want to do is that you wanna do a total of 12 strips. There's gonna be four that are eight inches. You're gonna be four that are seven and four that are six inches. So on screen what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the last one of the six inch with you and then what we're gonna do then is that we're going to then apply it to the project. So let me show you how to do one of these strips and then you just take your measuring tape and you measure off the ones that you need to do and then do four of each. So let's show you how to do that. It's really quite quick. So let's show you how to do the strip of the pie crust. So normally what we do is we start off and then we have a smaller end. With this you need to leave a longer end so that you can use to sew it afterwards. So then just start it the slip knot in a way that you can still use this as a sewing. So you're just gonna insert in. You've done a slip knot and now you're going to chain two. So just one and two. So you're just gonna go back and forth in the rows and there's only one stitch per row. That's how easy this is. So you go back to the first stitch here on the chain and single crochet. Okay and then chain one and then go into the just turn it and do in the first stitch and single crochet, chain one and then you keep doing that until you get to the length that you want. So you need four that are eight inches and four that are seven inches and four that are six inches. So you will notice that you'll be able to blast through these crusts really quite quickly. It's just one single crochet in each one and then you just chain one and then just turn it and keep doing that. So just grab your measuring tape, just measure it down. Once you do the one I would use the one then as your guide then for that particular size and then once you're done then you're gonna fasten off leaving an extra long um, um, string here and you're gonna use that to sew it into the project as well. So let me get to the end of this and show you how to finish that off. So here's one that I've already done. It's only six inches. It's the last one I'm doing and I just have this one here and it looks like it's the same. Okay so I once I get the first six inch one done I measure then the rest of them based on that. So every time I get a certain size so the eight inches I did one eight inches and then I used it to measure the rest of them and the seven etc. When you're done then just leave an extra long tail because you're gonna use a darning needle to be able to sew that into the project and just uh, pull through the loop and just put it aside. Okay and so you wanna do all your pie crusts next. Okay get all these done and then what we're gonna do then is that I'll show you how to attach it to the other piece that we're gonna about to do and you're gonna need some pins for that. So let me show you that next. So the picture has the crest all laid out beautifully like so. The diagram is right on the bottom on how to do it. So you see that there's four strips that are eight inches so they're in the green and then you have the darker red here. There's four strips of that and then the other one there's four strips going all the way around. So you wanna use this as your tool to be able to do your weaving in and out and I would start off in the middle. So what I would do if it were me is that I'd grab some pins and use those to be able to help you. So I'm just gonna lay down the first four pretty roughly just down on top. So I'm not attaching anything to the back yet and I'm laying them down on top and then what I'm gonna do is that I'm using that diagram to show how to put it together. So I'm gonna do the next one just straight down and I don't know if it's gonna work out like in the sense that I just gotta adjust it as I go. So now the ones that are in across okay I can see on the pattern that it goes over this one here but it goes under this one. Okay so I'm just kind of eyeing things out now and I can adjust on the fly. Okay and then I'm gonna grab my last one here and the last one shows that it goes over this one here but it goes under the other one. So what I wanna do is that I wanna use that guideline now to be able to put all these in and then I'm gonna adjust and then I'm gonna use pins to be able to hold it to the edge so that I can sew each section in and it's just a really quick sew. It's not a big deal and then once I have everything laid out I'm gonna pin it all and then start sewing so it doesn't lose where it's supposed to be. So let me get that done and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So please do that now. Just as a reminder this was the eight inch. You can see the different sizes. So then I'm gonna grab my then seven inches and then start my other ones that are going up and they'll be uh, up even higher and also on the outside just like this. 
So off camera what I've done is that I've just started adjusting. I haven't pinned anything yet. I just want to adjust some things and just get everything looking as close as I can. Remember this is a pie. Nobody is perfect. Uh, Daniel's done the best tasting pies with the crust. Uh, this is not so perfect. So like as far as layout but uh, he tries and that's okay. So now uh, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take a pin and I'm going to pin it down to where I want it on the project. So now this will hold it still as I'm sewing in pieces going all the way around because if I start messing around with this thing um, I could end up with these adjusting. So I'm just gonna put a pin in each section going all the way down and all the way around so that I have it all positioned in so I can trust it so I can move things around. So please pin that in. I think it would be the easiest for you if you don't want to that's up to you. It's your creativity and then I'll show you how when I come back to be able to sew all these in a position. So now that my pie is now pinned down to the edge now I want to start sewing these in. You don't have to be too crazy about uh, being too um, finicky about this. The only thing I have to tell you is that watch this outside edge here. You do not want to impede on that because the crest when it goes to sit in will be using this particular um, stitch on the outside. So when you go to stitch through make sure that you don't impede anything so that you can't get that other stitch through. So um, here's the other one here. So the crest is gonna sit down underneath like so and the outside edge of the filling and the crest will be aligning together to do the final border of this. So you just wanna make sure you don't impede on that. So let's uh, just show you quickly on how to sew these in. To attach the crest all you just need to do is just throw the tail into a darning needle and right where you have the crest then coming to the outside of this. Okay so I've taken out the pin already and I'm just gonna go straight down through the crest and I'm gonna go straight through to the project but I'm gonna avoid the outside of this so I can keep that clear and come down through and then I'm gonna come back up the other side and then just get that crest one more time. So just attach it together coming up and then back through. So I'm only gonna do that once and then I'm back through the other side. So now what I'm gonna do is secure it on the back side of this because you'll never see it on the back because this is gonna be in between the crust and the pie filling on the inside. So I'm just gonna run it through a few times in the back here and then just secure it with a knot and then it's out of sight, out of mind and you're good to go. So I'm just gonna just do one more And then when you're done just trim and it's attached then at the front side like so and you left the outside edge like that. So please do that all the way around. So my pie crest has been put onto the top with the lattice work. It's now sewn on the outside and now I'm gonna take my pie crest on the other side. This is the wrong side so this is the right side facing down and I'm gonna put this and sandwich it on top. Now I noticed that there was no filling that shows between the crust and the outside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what I would do if it were me. It doesn't say to do this but I would really bother me if I saw it like that and I don't see it in the photo. So I'm gonna show you what I'm about to do and let's start that next. And we're gonna pull up our jute color which is the crust and we're gonna go all the way around. So with our pie crest color I want to create a slip knot and I'm gonna insert my hook into there. So now because the bulk, uh, the crust and the filling are the same size I'm just gonna go right through but here's what I'm gonna do is that I notice that there's no pie filling that falls in between the crust like this. So it looks like that this overlaps. So what I'm gonna do is not only am I gonna go into the stitch in behind and catch both of them but I'm gonna go right through the crust itself on the top. So just kinda going in and just securing it into position and it pulls it over top of everything. So then go into the filling and then go into the crust just to get it started and we're gonna do a slip stitch to join and then we're going to chain one and then just single crochet back into that same spot. So it's a very easy way to go. So every time that there's pie crust that is coming to the outside I wanna make sure it comes. So just look to the filling next and just go right through the filling and through the bottom pie crust at the same time and I want you to single crochet in like that. Okay so this one happens to be another filling and pie crust in the back and it's one single crochet into each if you haven't figured that out. So I can tell the next one here, see the pie crust. If I leave it where it is it's gonna show that there's gonna be some filling. So I wanna grab this pie crust first. Okay just grab it by a significant 
amount of strands then go into the filling and then go into the pie crust in the back and then secure it and that will pull it over. See it pulls it over to make it look like it's part of the outside crust and then keep on moving around. So what I'll do is I'll leave that with you and just one single crochet into each and then pull that pie crust over when you need to in order to make it look like it's actually done all the way across. Okay so the, in this case it would be the next one for me. So just into the crust right in the top. Okay into the filling into the back and then into the crust in the back like so. Please do that all the way around. So I'm just coming up all the way around and my stitches actually match up perfectly. So that's not even a camera trick so that's a good thing. So I'm just going to join it to the beginning and you can see how I pulled it over and it matches on the outside as you can see here. So that was a good uh, decision as far as I'm concerned. So now the crest looks like it belongs to the outside of the crest as you see. So let's do our final round tonight and let's get it started. So let's do the final round together. We're going to start off by chaining three. So one, two and three and we're gonna double crochet into the same one that we're originating out of. So we're gonna double crochet there and then we're going to skip one stitch here and go to the next and do a slip stitch. Okay, so we'll slip it. So here's the repeat pattern. You're gonna chain three. So one, two, three and right where you've done the slip stitch already you are going to do a double crochet. Okay, this is gonna create a nice edging for you. Skip one, slip stitch into the next. Okay, it's just taking a bit of getting used to and then chain three. So one, two, three, double crochet into the same one. Skip one and slip stitch into the next and please do that all the way around and this is your final round and you can see that it changes it from being nice and round to having a little bit of uh, extra stuff at the end. As you come all the way back around you want to put on a, a loop if you want to hang it. So in my particular house Daniel would never allow that and we have a house set up that we don't have uh, walls behind our counters. So when you come up to the very end I just did my uh, double crochet and I'm going to then come into the very first one and if you want a hanging loop now is the time to apply it. So you just uh, pull through and then just chain 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13 and just loop it right back in with a slip stitch down into where it started from and then just using your strands here just uh, pull it through and then just uh, put it onto a darning needle and just weave it in and then you have a, a loop that is attached just like you see here. So but if that's not up to you because that's not uh, that would never go with my kitchen here um, it just wouldn't be allowed. <laughs> uh, we just I would I would do is just finish it off just like so and then I just cut it and then weave off my ends. So this is something that I would leave in the, the drawer and whenever I, I need it for a special occasion I would just pull it out instead of hanging it. So just shape it and you're good to go and you see that you have your pie crust in the bottom. You just gotta get rid of your loose ends and you're good to go. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Spaces as well as the crochet crowd.com. Thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.